Hey what's up guys, this is Ricky Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial and this time I want to talk about this beautiful subsurface scattering transformation growth effect. However you want to call it, I just called it like this because it sounds cool. But you can see we start with something like this and then with this one material you can create all kinds of crazy effects like this one or like this one, like this. This is also beautiful but my favorite is definitely this one. I mean this one, it, it feels like a mixture of car paint and a subsurface scattering crazy material and this one also looks cool so I want to talk about this one and I just uploaded the extended version with almost 40 minutes on my patreon okay where I by the way talk about a lot of cool stuff okay so if you want to learn anything cool in cinema 4d these are just some of the latest trainings but I think I have over 100 videos over there all right so if you consider to support me just go over to 3d bonfire on patreon and you will find lots of cool stuff there okay but Anyway, on YouTube, of course, you always get some nice stuff too. So let's just try to make this on YouTube really short so I can't go into all the details. I will just give you an overview how you can do it. But all of the details, I just packed it into this almost 40 minutes long lesson. All right. But now on YouTube, I hope I can still share some of the interesting knowledge with you and this will still be beneficial for you. By the way, I'm a long time Octane user. All right. So the last years, like five years, I always used Octane octane but now i'm just really really excited about redshift i basically almost love everything about it so i just created this beautiful artwork today and i really just changed to redshift or did the switch or let's better say i just learn redshift right now but after um after watching some tutorials could achieve something that looks beautiful so look at this material i think it's just awesome and yeah i will definitely talk about this one also on my patreon later but for now let's try to dissect how I built this material okay and it's really just one shader so let's dive into Cinema 4D and have some fun. Alright so as I said I'm totally new to Redshift and I just started with it but more or less the workflow between Octane, Arnold, Redshift more or less it's always the same okay so I think they are all PBR based with the materials and the shaders and when you know your way around in one of these or something else like V-Ray or Corona whatever I think it's not so difficult to change between the engines and be up to speed in a relatively fast time okay so I just wanted to show you here the render view of this material and yeah it's just this one material and inside this material is this stone material with the scratches and the roughness and inside of it there is also this effect so it's just one material and let's just try to dissect how I built this one honestly this is not such a complex shader and when you are experienced in redshift then you will just say hey Marcus come on this is so easy but maybe for some of the not so experienced long time veterans in redshift this can still be useful all right but as i said sometimes it's more helpful to really build it step by step and this is what i do on patreon but here let's just quickly dissect it so maybe you can already see what i did here so this is the first material the black stone material and maybe just for now i will go into my cube this is my main object and i will for now just deactivate the displacement so we will have a faster playback all right so now i think i can fire this one up and you can see that i blend between the first material this one it's a black stone and the second one which is let's just see it's this part of the tree okay so yeah this one the second one is just a subsurface scattering material where i activated the subsurface put this one to one and played with the values so this is the second part and this one is the second material so you can see i blend the first material with the second one with a material blender and inside of the blender i use like a, it's a vertex map all right i use the vertex map here as the blend color for the second material and this is just how you can split it from one material to the other all right so when i connect this one to my output then you can see this is just what i use to blend between material one and two all right and when you connect this one again then you can see that this is <laughs> what's happening here okay so <laughs> i don't know how to easily break this down 
without uh, boring you. So yeah, I mean, this one, let's just connect this one to the output. All right, you can see this is just a basic material. And inside of it, I have a texture in the roughness and another one in the bump. So this one is piping into the bump and the other one is going into the roughness. And then you get these beautiful surface details. And then the second material, we can also plug this one into the output is the subsurface scattering material. And when we blend it, it looks like this. And when you activate the displacement again, then it will look like this. All right. So not so complicated, to be honest, but the effect is just really beautiful. So you can mix different noises into it and then get all kinds of beautiful looks. OK, and maybe I can also just quickly talk about the vertex map here. So you can see on our object when I just pause the render view here, you can see that I have a vertex map which is growing over the object and disappearing with a noise and yeah, this is what I used to blend between material one and two. All right, so this was a really fast recap of how I achieved this effect. Basically, I just use a material blender and a vertex map to blend between two materials and I activate displacement map to just get this beautiful displaced effect on it. So maybe I would just add a little bit of knowledge on this shader too into this YouTube lesson. All right, so let me just quickly talk about this beautiful subsurface material on this sculpture here. Okay, so let's jump one more time into Cinema 4D and you can see that this is my viewport. Here is the render view again and I mean it's still calculating. That's why it's a bit noisy here and I deactivated the displacement for now. So some of these gold flakes, they don't have the extrusion here like this displacement. You can see it here. This is just that we have a faster performance in the viewport and let's just look at the node tree for this main material and I try to not make this too long and too boring. And let's just see this material. So once again, I use the Material Blender. So Material Blender is just awesome. And I blend this material and maybe I will just plug this one into the output. I mean, it's just calculating a bit longer because I set the settings to high, I guess, or very high. But you can see now we don't have the gold in it. So this is the shader one, or let's better say the first standard material. I just called this one soap. And of course, the subsurface scattering is activated again with a weight of one and then you just play with the colors and the scale and then you have a beautiful shader so it's not so difficult and then we have the second material which is this one and when I plug this one into the output node then you can see this is the gold shader so I blend between the soap shader the subsurface scattering material and the gold shader and therefore I use this one which I use as the blend color for the second material so you can change between material one and two by these black and white values and you can see this is just a combination of different max and noises that you get this beautiful pattern. And when you use this one to change between material one and two, then basically you get this shader. And when I just look at it here, then you can see this is quite beautiful. OK, of course, I put some roughness and some bump into the mix to get these surface details. But overall, this is a quick overview about this material. Of course, I will dissect the scene a bit more in depth on my Patreon. But for you guys on YouTube, I hope still this was beneficial for you and it was some interesting knowledge thank you so much for your time see you next time bye everyone